It's just something about them that just makes you fall in love with them. They're your children. Barrett's are children with little fur coats. Well, they're definitely family. Joe seems to think I spoil my ferrets, but to me, I think they're just right. Every once in a while, if you hold them just right, they'll kiss you on the nose or, or lick you or something like that. If I went to my psychiatrist and said, yes, I understand what my ferrets are saying, I'd be on little funny colored pills. They are my family. I just can't imagine life without them. To me, ferrets are the reason for being. I can't put it any more simply. They bring so much joy into my life. Because of the ferrets, I've developed a network of friends all across the country. By going to the ferret shows and meeting people and having people support me in my learning to show ferrets, it, it's broadened my horizons. I have friends now that I never, ever dreamed I would have. I've had the opportunity to travel They've just brought so much richness into my life. I can't imagine life without ferrets. Go, Ori, go. Go, Oreo. My day is organized around the ferrets. I uh, get up in the morning. They have their out-of-cage time before I get ready for work. When I come home from work, then we have our out-of-cage time in the evening. In other words, my day is focused around these critters. They're that important a part of my life. Ori, come on, bud. Come on, come on. Oh, good job. Good job. What person or animal wouldn't want to be loved, wouldn't want to be cared for and given toys and affection? All right, Ori, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Everything I give these ferrets, they give back to me tenfold. I can have a horrible day at work and come home and the ferrets go, Mom's home, let's play and they're out of the cage, and we're having a good time. OK, here we go. Some people say that they know what their ferrets are thinking. They can tell by what they're doing, how they're, how they're acting. Yes, I, I have to agree with that. I know my animals. I spend enough time just sitting and observing. If I come home and I'm not in a good mood, they tend to be more exuberant. They tend to come to me and try to draw me out. Um, when I'm playful, they feel that, too. So I think they read us as well as we read them. Ferret people, I tend to think of them as kind of an alternative. People who don't follow mainstream, who are willing to try things different. When I first got into ferrets, I thought all ferret people had, the men had ponytails and the women had tattoos. And uh, it seemed a little, uh, I don't know, a little young and trendy. Uh, but maybe that's what I need too, is that they still feel young and trendy. So I've got my little unique pets. You guys ready to come out? You have to come downstairs. Come on down here and we'll go out. Let's go. Right at this stage of my life, my ferrets are my hobby. It's become a very consuming hobby. And you know, we gave up the whole level of the house just to keep them comfortable. You. Hey, you. My family knows that when I come home from work, no matter what time of night, I need to spend at least three hours uh, so that the ferrets can have some time out of the cage. Are you wound up? Are you wound up? Go play. They just have to explore every corner and not just sniffing around like a dog. They have to check out where they hid their last toy. They have to see how high they can climb on a shelf. They have to push all the papers off your desk. Um, when they get bored, they come up and, and look at you like, come on, come on, come on, let's go play. My children have grown up with a house full of pets. 
but this ferret thing has kind of taken over. I try to balance family life and my hobby. And anytime we're in public, my children always, they roll their eyes and say, Mom, can we have a conversation without using the F word? I have a little ferret who likes to steal my things. She takes my shoes and my socks and all my shiny rings. She hoards up all the plastic. She likes the denture cream. And in her little ferret eye, she has an impish gleam. Ferret, oh ferret, gather of stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? Ferrets, like a lot of animals, offer unconditional love. So if you're not feeling too good about yourself, you pick your ferret up and it adores you, it makes you feel a lot better. Come on, who wants to come out? Come on, come on, come on. You want to come out? Come on. Who wants out? They do make a lot of mess, so they can be a lot of work, but it's so much fun to take care of them. They accept whatever they've got at the moment. They play with whatever they can. If they're sick, they accept it. If they die, they accept it. Ready? Hey! Woo! Hey, your turn. You can't have a bad day and have ferrets out. It, it, it doesn't matter how depressed or unhappy you are, you come home and those ferrets will cheer you up by just doing what they do. I do treat them a lot like my family. In fact, we have a running joke that I have eight kids and three dogs. So, <laughs> and, and people will go, you have eight kids? I said, oh yes, they're four-legged. And we leave it at that because once you say you have ferrets, people are like, oh, I, I got tired of fighting about the ferrets. So I'm crazy ferret lady at work. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to college and Brian, my now husband, we moved into an apartment together. He said, well, why don't we get a cat? And I said, uh, well, what about a ferret? And I basically said, what, what is a ferret? Uh, and she showed me, and to me, it just looked like a big rat. And she said, it's just something I've always wanted. They're, they're, they're interesting, they're cute, they're animated. So I agreed. They are extremely intelligent, they're problem solvers, they're almost analytical, uh, and they're persistent. Uh, 
Well, as soon as I got the ferret in 98, um, I was hooked. Here, you can hold it. Oh, yeah. Ferrets are warm and fuzzy and cute and have the characteristics to make them or make a lot of people like them. I mean, granted, there are several folks that, you know, they won't like a ferret. They'll think it looks like a rat or a weasel or something like that and are turned off about it. But if they have the opportunity to be around ferrets, um, they can really see their good qualities. Well, let me give you a little tour of my uh, ferret room. Um, as you can probably see, there's quite a few ferrets down here. And um, having been into ferrets for um, a little over 18 years, um, I have quite a few. Let me introduce you to a few of them. Um, up here is uh, Lolita. We'll see if we can wake her up a little bit. She's one of my old girls. She'll be uh, nine. Hey, Lita, Lita. She'll be nine this spring. And then uh, some of the other guys, um, they're in the cage for 24 hours and out of the cage for 24 hours, so they get their run time. People come and see my ferrets, and they say, they all have different names. I'm like, well, yeah, you name your kids. So, you know, all my ferrets have different names and I know each of their names and I know, you know, what they do and what they like and who they like and, and that sort of thing. Uh, a couple of my other boys are in here. It's Malibu making a mess in their pen and uh, his brother is in the next pen. That's Mojito. Um, if you notice, I have their hammocks up high. Um, I want them to climb up into their hammocks. It helps build um, muscle tone and uh, gives them better muscle coverage. Um, and that's really important for um, when you're showing your ferrets. I usually have pretty good success at showing ferrets. Um, by being a breeder and having some good quality ferrets, yeah, I think I set a benchmark. And this is a little chocolate solid girl. Haven't seen many chocolate solids, and uh, I'm introducing her at the next uh, ferret show. So uh, people will probably be a little mad at me again. So, oh well, I'll get over it, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it for the tour. Ferret in Latin is Mustella furo, and I believe that translates to um, thieving weasel. I had underwear missing, I had socks missing, I had shorts missing. One of his nicknames was Dirty Old Man. Well, we'll leave it at that. Because he loved anything with elastic, whether it be underwear, boxers, or, or bras. I've lost newspapers, I've lost articles of clothing. Some of them love socks. You'll find all your socks gone. I set my shoes down, the next thing I know, the insoles are running off the side, you know, just taking off and going. But they only steal one shoe from the pair, so when I try to get ready for work in the morning, I'm walking around with only one shoe. She likes to steal potatoes and hide them neath my chair. And by the time I find them, they're all covered up in hair. But my silly little ferret comes chirping in dismay. How could I be so mean, so cruel to take her prize away? I interact with mine at least four hours every day. If you watch them, they will talk to you in, in sign language. I don't know sign language. I've never tried to learn it. I know Sue can command the deaf ferrets to do things, and they'll do them just by, like, come, and, and um, she'll say something about she loves them and, and things like this. 
usually it's things like I have like this was for outside. That's one of their favorite signs because they love to go outside on the back porch. A ferret loves outside. So besides letting them run on the porch, I will take them for walks. They love to just get out and look around, and they're very curious and very nosy critters. You can hold them and show them around. In the ferret community, a lot of times they typically call that butt planing because the ferret looks like a plane and you're kind of flying it. One day she took the garbage bags connected in a roll and stuffed them up into my couch all through a little hole. She wove them in and out and through the springs under my couch and made with this a little nest a comfy ferret pouch. Ferret, oh ferret, gather of stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? I was first introduced to ferrets to my husband. I come into his house and I looked on in the side of his kitchen and I was like, wow, you have a ferret. I was like, yeah, they're a lot of fun. You'll, you'll really enjoy her. And she was still like scared of the ferret. And, and uh, it took a little while, but she really warmed up to it. And then it was, uh, it was all downhill from there. All she had to do was open the cage and let her out. That's all it took. It was kind of a bonding thing for us, you know what I mean? And then we would go out and get things for the ferrets together. Then it was soon after that, maybe a few weeks, we got another ferret. And then we was able to mess with them together and, and buy things for them and do things. And it was definitely a bonding thing for us. I mean, it's just something about them that just makes you fall in love with them. It's the way they do things. It's their, their high energy. And then all of a sudden, they're sleeping. And it's just hard to explain. I guess it's just something in your heart. I have one boy, Sam, and I could have the most miserable day at work, but all I have to do is come home, sit down on the couch, and let Sam out. And then 10 minutes later, I'm laughing my butt off. And Miko, Miko, actually Miko comes up on the couch and he'll sit there. He'll sit beside me on the couch and he'll eat trees. And sometimes he'll crawl on a blanket and go to sleep with you. Ivan came from Hurricane Ivan. He was born four or five weeks before Hurricane Ivan hit Florida. And when Hurricane Ivan hit, and we had total massive flooding in this area. I mean, I almost didn't even make it home from work that day. It was so bad. That's why I named him Hurricane Ivan. I guess my favorite ferret over the years has been Hot Zultry Zoe. When Parker and I first met, there's not any words to describe how it was. We were meant to be together, and I love him dearly. It's the face, it's the personality, uh, the expression. Uh, sometimes you feel like you're almost looking in a mirror with these guys. I do have a favorite ferret. Uh, that right now, that's Nigel. There's just something about Luther's face, his eyes. He has the most beautiful, beautiful expression on his face. Probably my favorite right now is my youngest one, Loki. His uh, full name is Loki Motion. He's my favorite because he gives very enthusiastic kisses. Yeah, I like those Loki kisses. Probably my favorite at this point right now, and I'll be losing him within the next probably couple months, is Gisborne Zen is his name, and he's seven and a half years old. Uh, he has cancer of the lip now. When I lose him, it's, it's going to take a long time to recover from him. Family pets are very, very dear to the people, you know. It's like having a brother or sister. You talk to them, and in their own way, they talk back. And uh, 
you know, when you lose one, it's really tough. The heartbreak with ferrites, unfortunately, their lives just seem so short. We put one down in May, and I still think about them. I mean, they're, they're not far from your heart. Last year, I had lost a little girl, and that was probably the hardest thing I ever been through. It's been almost a year to the day. But everybody was very supportive of me, and that was, that was a big, big help. Big help. The Rainbow Bridge is a very important part of a fair donor's life because the babies that have passed go over the bridge and wait for you. When you go over the bridge, they're going to be there. It's kind of like a little ferret heaven. And they say when they die, they go over to the Rainbow Bridge and they live happily ever after there. It's a good, a good thing to think that they don't just end. Um, I'm going to start crying. Uh, they have too much personality to think that they just end. All of our animals are buried here. We have what they, we call our, our small little pet cemetery, which is nice. grieving for, you know, another friend or human or even a kid. Most of mine are cremated, and I have them in boxes, and um, I have, like, a shelf that's a memorial to them. We have pictures and stuff that um, I have all over the house. large planters and I have rose bushes in there and the ferrets are in there wherever I move they go and they're always alive when they do pass away I have their bodies cremated and I have them in little tins and they're here in the ferret room with me They're always with me. Because I have a big deep freeze, I end up collecting the dead ferrets of all the people in the club because we can get up to 25 pounds cremated for a good price. So we collect 25 pounds of dead ferret. And then after their ashes come back, we kind of divvy them up and go, OK, here's you know, two teaspoons for you. And let's see, you had two ferrets, so you get four teaspoons. <laughs> My husband thinks it's very, very weird. He, he complains that there's, at any given time, more dead ferrets in my freezer than there are there's food for humans. And then with single-mindedness, she feathered up her nest. She lined it with my children's socks. She really liked them best. And then she decorated it with bits of treasure found. Treasure being anything that chanced to hit the ground. Ferret, oh ferret, gather a stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? We'll put the lay on first. Oh, look at that. Oh, darling, your marvelous look. Okay, why don't you throw a scruff on him? I think ferret owners are, are different from other sorts of owners in that 
that Ferret's being so incredibly playful. It takes a playful person to really hook into that. Maybe somebody who's almost childlike in their sense of play. Look at the shimmy. He's got the movement. He's got the motion. Well, now we have a senorita fandango. I love dressing them up. I have some that just, they just look so cute. This was a good one. You know, and I, I don't know, maybe part of it is when I was a little kid, I was a tomboy. So I didn't get into all the little dressy girly things. I do it now. Maybe I'm in my second childhood, but I love making costumes. Hey, more beer here. Green beer, green beer for me and all my friends. We're gonna put on your Dracula costume. Hey. For me, it seemed like as my children got older and grew up and moved out that I sort of replaced them with ferrets. You like it? The advantage was that I could put them in a cage and they arrest you if you do that with your kids. Hi. <laughs> Ride them, cowboy. A person who has ferrets develops a special way of walking. I typically call it my ferret shuffle. Ferrets love toes, especially if they're not socked. Weasel war dance. That's the happy dance that they do. They start bouncing up and down, their backs arch up, their mouths hang open. It's a sheer dance of joy. Speed bump is a phenomenon that scares some new owners. They totally flatten out. Sometimes we call it a ferret pancake. They stop, they just flatten out, and it's like their little brain is taking a breath, looking for the next thing they want to get into, and then they're up and going again. And you'll see the rug going up and down and bouncing around, and it's the, the carpet sharks underneath it causing havoc. I've had them under baskets and cardboard boxes, litter pans, all sorts of things. They'll get into them and, and make them move. Duck is a wonderful noise that ferrets make. It sounds a slightly like a clucking sound, but very soft. And they make a little duck, 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 duck as they're exploring around or if they're excited to meet each other. Uh, some are t more talkative than others. This cage is just my breeder ferrets, which are kept separate because the males don't always like each other. And then these are my babies, my youngsters. When I first got to above one or two ferrets, I looked into finding out if there was any sort of a ferret club in the neighborhood. And I found the ferret club, and they were preparing for a fundraiser, which was a ferret show. My last set of cages here are my retired breeders and show ferrets. Well, I went to Chicago show, had a wonderful time. I won. There were 200 ferrets there. And out of 200 of them, I'd brought home two ribbons. And I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. And I started going to every show I could within uh, about a 500 mile radius. The ribbons that are hanging are everything from first to last place of the ferrets that are alive right now. I love having a chance to display them all. They're all so colorful and our sense of pride too. And the trophies, the trophies are few and far between because I am new at this. I have very few trophies. So they definitely get displayed. The Buckeye Bash is a really big show. It's, I, if there's a show 
that I would want somebody to go to, I would say go to that one. It's huge. For the Buckeye Bash on Saturday, I'm taking four ferrets. Um, my prime ferret is Obsidian Tears. He's a four-pound neutered male. Well, this will be Luther's first time in the breeder class, so we're very excited to see how he'll do against the best of the best. I'm also going to take Black Magic, and I know a lot of people are going to not like me there because uh, she is very, very black and usually wins the Black Sable class. Buddy won last year in Sable, and I think he's got a good shot again this year of Sable. Uh, we'll have Japanese judges because ferrets are huge in Japan. Um, they're huge in Germany. Well, they're huge all over the world. Leading up to a show, it's always interesting to me to call other breeders that I know and ask them, what do you do to get ready? What, what do you, how soon do you start? I know one that uh, turns the air conditioning on as cold as possible for the month before a show. just to get their coats a little bit thicker and fuller. So trick the ferrets into thinking it's winter. I don't have time to mess with that, honestly, with working full time. So my ferrets win on their own merit. The, the best thing I do before a show is give them a bath and make sure their ears and nails are clean. I do have a little trick with what shampoo I use, but that, that's probably my only um, trade secret. <laughs> There is a new line of women's shampoos that are specific for certain colors of hair. And I use the one that's for silver hair for myself, and so I bought the blonde one for my sandy colored ferrets, and I have the brunette version for my darker ferrets. And I honestly think that it picks up the light makes them look a little shinier and fluffier. I'm very careful not to get it in their eyes or anything, and I haven't noticed that it harms them. I only do it for shows. Primarily, what, what is problematic with the altered males is they lose the muscle across their back and ribs. And in order to get that back, they need to climb. That's why we play on the stairs. That's why I put the ferret luge together to get them up those stairs to exercise those back and shoulder muscles. Go, baby, go. Go, go, Missy. Go, 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 go Missy. You can't just stay here. You have to give in to me sooner or later. Come on, don't pout. I'm not gonna carry you. Come on, big guy. You can do it. Come on, I don't wanna drag you. Come on, don't make me drag you. I don't wanna drag you. Oh, are you lazy? I'm not going to carry you. Come on. I'm not going to carry you. No, you walk nice. Come on. I like to win. I'd rather uh, enter places where I know I'll do well. A small specialty show in a uh, 
in Wisconsin or something, I'll do much better than a national show like the Buckeye Bash where there's stiffer competition. But the joy is if you do place or win, it means a lot more. It's the largest ferret show of its kind in the United States. People come from all over. They put on one heck of a show out there in Ohio. It's almost like an addiction going to shows. Uh, it's fun. I'm seeing all the people and you get to know everyone. The most prominent breeders will be there. Um, they'll bring the best ferrets and it'll be the toughest show pretty much in the United States. Thank you everybody for coming to this year's Ferret Buckeye Bash. Good luck to everybody. Let the show begin. Judges look for an affair. They're looking for good muscle, good muscle coverage, all the way down around, around the neck, the shoulders, back on the hips. With the barrel, you want them nice and round. And when you bring your hand down from their barrel all the way down to their hips, you want the same width there. With the head, you're looking for good depth in the head, good width between the ears there, and about the same distance between the ears and the eyes and the eyes and the nose. Make sure the ears are clean. If you want to check teeth, make sure the teeth are clean. Nails nicely trimmed. That's what you're basically looking for. Numbers 700 through 710. The first 10 ferrets in each of these rings should be prepped, placed in the carriers, and brought off to the drop-off tables. The drop-off tables are located in each of the judges' rings on the left-hand side of the judges. It isn't the intensity of competition. It's more, for me, it's more like the parental thing. You're proud that your kid got an A in school. You're proud that your ferret got a sixth-place ribbon. To even place in a, in a large show like the Buckeye Bash is, is doing very well because there are so many ferrets that show since it's the largest show in the country. But it's a pride thing. It's a pride of... Here's my ferret and see what he did. And, and it's a pride for me too, because in order for a ferret to place well, I've got to do my work. Nice coloring, really nice coloring. Wow, wow, wow. Look, look how black, I mean, that's, yeah. that's gorgeous. That's a handsome boy. Look at the veil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very soft. What she I can't read that. Something coach, very black nose, great solid black sable. All right. 77.4, that's decent. Good job, buddy. Good job. Thanks. It is an emotional charge, and it, and it is an ego boost. And for some of the ferrets um, to see, to know where they were and what they, what they have accomplished is also, in a way, what you have accomplished. Come on. Good luck, Cheeky. Kick their butts. Here's another one with the yellow screen. All the way from the tail, all. That'll be time of year. It's taking me a lot of time to realize what's a show ferret. 
Um, originally, I was more concerned with markings, to have the perfect markings, and sometimes I'd see a pet store ferret that would have a perfect mask or just the right color, and it didn't do well in a show. And I've had to learn by um, talking to the judges and just with experience learning, there's a lot more that goes in. It's not a beauty contest. I know several people who are utterly convinced they're going to get first place every single show they go to. And obviously there can only be one first place. There will be five people who are utterly certain and that's bound to cause some problems because some people just do not take the disappointment very well. I think some of the rules are It makes it difficult to be new at it. They're kind of set by people who have been doing it a long time. And if you come into it new and you're not familiar, it, it's, it's a very steep learning curve. Being a fair judge, you're not going to please everybody every time. Sometimes um, disagreements can get a little heated. Um, some people think the judges don't know what they're doing. That's a little rough, and uh, I've been um, the recipient of that on several occasions. And I have actually had it out with a couple of judges, which was very unprofessional, and I apologized profusely afterwards because I knew even while I was doing it, I shouldn't have been doing it, but I couldn't stop. If a ferret nips a judge or bites a judge, they can disqualify that ferret from that ring. And which, you know, you can't blame them. All right, Tiny has a penchant for biting wrists. So don't let her at your wrist. She's been very good today. She's been good, but I can't guarantee anything. This is the A okay. number at the end. Gotcha. Each of them seem to have a special thing that they like to bite, um, and Tiny goes for wrists and fingers. I have had others that were uh, really into faces. I have one, my daughter's ferret actually um, likes faces, and I think some of that is being playful, because when a ferret wants to play with the other ferret, it, uh, it will pounce on it. And, they, they want to play with you and, and your nose just happens to be the thing that's sticking out farthest, so they grab your nose. Anybody should know not to put somebody else's pet up to their face. And I had her within range, so I paid the price. I just, I just can't believe how much blood comes out of one nose. <laughs> she's not a bad girl, I and mean, she's... She's a sweetheart, and, and in a way, she doesn't realize what she did. What she did was, that was fear. It wasn't being aggressive. So, we we're trying to decide if I need to get a stitch or two, but I think being on the tip of the nose, it'll be my, my uh, battle scar. Oh, she didn't bite you. Yeah, she didn't. She was a very good girl. Good girl. Very good girl. I need all of the altar hobs back to the judging table for ribboning. We want these numbers to come back to the judging area for ribboning. 
200. When they have callbacks, that means you get a ribbon. One through 10, you don't know yet. And that is very exciting. For ribboning, 600, 601, 603, 605, 606, 607, 610, 611, 613, 615, 617, 619. As they start reading off the ribbons is where you really get the adrenaline going because they start at 10th place. 10th place, 317. place 429 and the longer it goes it's like oh 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 <laughs> seventh place 403 sixth place 311 yes yes <laughs> <laughs> the ferrets don't care. The ferrets could care less. And I try to look at it like the ferret would. And then if I do get called up, then I look at it as a human would. <laughs> and I enjoy it. 409 and 308 up, please. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And in second place, we have... Mainly for me, it's like, yeah, this is mine, you know? I bred this boy, and, you know, he's winning first place, and this is great, you know? See, I can breed these ferrets. I guess to show other people, too, that, you know, my breeding is just as, just as good as yours. You know, I, I can be, breed good ferrets, too. Obviously, everybody wants to have the first place ferret. Everybody wants to win the race. Everybody wants to have the fastest car. Joe's a little more competitive than I am, I'm not going to lie, it is nice to get, especially if the top three, you can get in the top three, that makes it a lot of fun. And of course, to win the category is, you know, that's the biggest rush of all. I call it trophy high when I win. So it's just, you're flying, just flying high. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that can touch it as far as I'm concerned. Winning the best in show, that, that's the ultimate. Twenty-three, six twenty-five, six twenty-six, six hundred, six hundred one, six zero three, six zero five, six zero six, four ribboning. Thank you. Five oh five.
very exciting day. Uh, I'm actually a little bit on trophy high right now. <laughs> Luther, fabulous, just won the breeder class. He swept the breeder class, which was very exciting. And since this was his coming out show last year, and he won that one too, so it says, we love coming to Ohio. This is a great show. There are some killer ferrets in this group. I mean, there are 60 ferrets in here, and for her to be the best female alter ferret in this building today is wonderful. It's wonderful. She's the best fixed female. Yes. As I told my husband, we woke up this morning that I had a dream that he took the best alter. And he did, huh? He also took heaviest. There have been times when I've walked away empty-handed and, and my first thought is, what a waste of time. And what did I do wrong? I, I just don't understand why I thought I had a chance and nothing, <laughs> nothing. In 10th place, we have 610. In 9th place, 607. In 8th place, 603. In 7th place, 623. And they get to about 5th place. And if I haven't heard my ferret called yet, I just there's this little tingling at the back of your neck like I made the top five. In fourth place, 615. And they keep going up fourth place, third place, and they haven't called my ferret yet. And I'm like, I don't believe this, I don't believe this, I don't believe this. And then it gets down to the top two. I get a, you know, the adrenaline rush, the heart starts pounding. That's one of the reasons I like ferret shows. Your friends are there and they're happy for you and everybody's patting you on the back and congratulations and you have your little moment of fame. Pam, Pam got a trophy. Congratulations. Buffy got first place, um, the baby got seven, and, and Corn Dog got honorable mention. Ta da! Daddy, look! They won prizes. <laughs> Buffy. Buffy took the trophy. Invite. Around lunchtime, I was pretty depressed. Uh, I didn't think we were going to go home with anything. So this was. I held my breath the whole time they were giving out the ribbons because I was on tippy toes rocking. I, I just really didn't, I didn't think she would be the one to do it, but it's it, wonderful, wonderful.
She had my husband's denture cream, my long-lost camera cap, 13 pair of dirty socks, a roll of plastic wrap, an eraser full of teeth marks, some pencils and a pen, two jelly beans, a gumdrop, all stacked inside her den. Ferret, oh ferret, gather a stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? It took me 20 minutes to pull out all that stuff. It took me 20 minutes more to vacuum up the fluff. But when my ferret was let loose, her joy at freedom plain. It only took her seconds to put it back again. Ferret, oh ferret, gather a stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Ferrets is available on video cassette or DVD. To order, call PBS Home Video at 1 800 Play PBS. I had underwear missing, I had socks missing, I had shorts missing. One of his nicknames was Dirty Old Man. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Because he loved anything with elastic, whether it be underwear, boxers, or, or bras. I've lost newspapers, I've lost articles of clothing. Some of them love socks. You'll find all your socks gone. I set my shoes down, the next thing I know, the insoles are running off the side, you know, just taking off and going. But they only steal one shoe from the pair, so when I try to get ready for work in the morning, I'm walking around with only one shoe. She likes to steal potatoes and hide them neath my chair. And by the time I find them, they're all covered up in hair. But my silly little ferret comes chirping in dismay. How could I be so mean, so cruel to take her prize away? I interact with mine at least four hours every day. If you watch them, they will talk to you in, in sign language. I don't know sign language. I've never tried to learn it. I know Sue can command the deaf ferrets to do things, and they'll do them just by, like, come, and, and um, she'll say something about she loves them and, and things like this. Usually it's things like, I have, like, this was for outside. That's one of their favorite signs because they love to go outside on the back porch. <laughs> ferret loves outside so besides letting them run on the porch I will take them for walks they love to just get out and look around and they're very curious and very nosy critters you can hold them and show them around in the ferret community a lot of times they typically call that butt planing because the ferret looks like a plane and you're kind of flying it Ferrets, like a lot of animals, offer unconditional love. So if you're not feeling too good about yourself, you pick your ferret up and it adores you, it makes you feel a lot better. Come on, who wants to come out? Come on, come on, come on. You want to come out? Come on. Who wants out? They do make a lot of mess, so they can be a lot of work, but 
It's so much fun to take care of them. Ready? <laughs> they accept whatever they've got at the moment. They play with whatever they can. If they're sick, they accept it. If they die, they accept it. Ready? You can't have a bad day and have ferrets out. It, it, it doesn't matter how depressed or unhappy you are, you come home and those ferrets will cheer you up by just doing what they do. I do treat them a lot like my family. In fact, we have a running joke that I have eight kids and three dogs. So, <laughs> and, and people will go, you have eight kids? I said, oh yes, they're four-legged. And we leave it at that because once you say you have ferrets, people are like, oh, I, I got tired of fighting about the ferrets. So I'm crazy ferret lady at work. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to college and Brian, my now husband, we moved into an apartment together. He said, well, why don't we get a cat? And I said, uh, well, what about a ferret? And I basically said, what, what is a ferret? Uh, and she showed me, and to me, it just looked like a big rat. And she said, it's just something I've always wanted. They're, they're, they're interesting, they're cute, they're animated. So I agreed. They are extremely intelligent, they're problem solvers, they're almost analytical, uh, and they're persistent. trophy high right now. <laughs> Luther, fabulous, just won the breeder class. He swept the breeder class, which was very exciting. And since this was his coming out show last year, and he won that one too, so it says, we love coming to Ohio. This is a great show. There are some killer ferrets in this group. I mean, there are 60 ferrets in here. For her to be the best female alter ferret in this building today is wonderful. It's wonderful. She's the best fixed female. Yes. I told my husband we woke up this morning that I had a dream that he took the best salter. And he did, huh? He also took heaviest. There have been times when I've walked away empty-handed and, and my first thought is, what a waste of time and what did I do wrong? I, I just don't understand why I thought I had a chance and nothing, <laughs> nothing. And they get to about fifth place. And if I haven't heard my ferret called yet, I just, there's this little tingling at the back of your neck like I made the top five. In fourth place, 615. And they keep going up fourth place, third place, and they haven't called my ferret yet. And I'm like, I don't believe this, I don't believe this, I don't believe this. And 
and then it gets down to the top two. I get a, you know, the adrenaline rush, the heart starts pounding. They do make a lot of mess, so they can be a lot of work, but it's so much fun to take care of them. You ready? <laughs> they accept whatever they've got at the moment. They play with whatever they can. If they're sick, they accept it. If they die, they accept it. Ready? You can't have a bad day and have ferrets out. It, it it doesn't matter how depressed or unhappy you are, you come home and those ferrets will cheer you up by just doing what they do. I do treat them a lot like my family. In fact, we have a running joke that I have eight kids and three dogs. So, <laughs> and, and people will go, you have eight kids? I said, oh yes, they're four-legged. And we leave it at that because once you say you have ferrets, people are like, oh, I, I got tired of fighting about the ferrets. So I'm crazy ferret lady at work. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to college and Brian, my now husband, we moved into an apartment together. He said, well, why don't we get a cat? And I said, uh, well, what about a ferret? And I basically said, what, what is a ferret? Uh, and she showed me, and to me, it just looked like a big rat. And she said, it's just something I've always wanted. They're, they're, they're interesting, they're cute, they're animated. So I agreed. They are extremely intelligent, they're problem solvers, they're almost analytical, uh, and they're persistent. That is very exciting. Four ribboning, 600, 601, 603, 605, 606, 607, 610, 611, 613, 615, 617, 619. As they start reading off the ribbons, is where you really get the adrenaline going because they start at 10th place. 10th place, 317. Yay. Ninth place, 429. And the longer it goes, it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Seventh place. 403. Sixth place, 311. Yes, yes! <laughs> the ferrets don't care. The ferrets could care less. And I try to look at it like the ferret would. And then if I do get called up, then I look at it as a human would. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I enjoy it. 623. Probably my favorite right now is my youngest one, Loki. His uh, full name is Loki Motion. He's my favorite because he gives very enthusiastic kisses. Yeah, I like those Loki kisses. Probably my favorite at this point right now, and I'll be losing him within the next probably couple months, is Gisborne Zen is his name, and he's seven and a half years old. Uh, he has cancer of the lip now. When I lose him, it's, it's gonna take a long time to recover from him. Family pets are very, very dear to the people, you know. It's like having a brother or sister. You talk to them, and in their own way, they talk back. And, uh, you know, when you lose one, it's really tough. The heartbreak with ferrets is, unfortunately, their lives just seem so short. We put one down in May, and I still think about them. I mean, they're, they're not far from your heart. Last year, I had lost a little girl, and that was probably the hardest thing I ever been through. It's been almost a year to the day. But everybody was very supportive of me, and that was, that was a big, big help. Big help. The Rainbow Bridge is a very important part of a fair donor's life because the babies that have passed go over the bridge and wait for you. When you go over the bridge, they're going to be there. It's kind of like a little ferret heaven. And they say when they die, they go over to the Rainbow Bridge and they live happily ever after there. It's a good, a good thing to think that they don't just end. Um, I'm going to start crying. Uh, they have too much personality to think that they just end. All of our animals are buried here. We have what they, we call our, our small little pet cemetery, which is nice. just right every once in a while if you hold them just right they'll kiss you on the nose or or lick you or something like that if I went to my psychiatrist and said yes I understand what my ferrets are saying I'd be on little funny colored pills they are my family I just can't imagine life without them
To me, ferrets are the reason for being. I can't put it any more simply. They bring so much joy into my life. Because of the ferrets, I've developed a network of friends all across the country. By going to the ferret shows and meeting people and having people support me in my learning to show ferrets, it, it's broadened my horizons. I have friends now that I never, ever dreamed I would have. I've had the opportunity to travel. They've just brought so much richness into my life. I can't imagine life without ferrets. Go, Roy, go. Go, Oreo. My day is organized around the ferrets. I get up in the morning. They have their out of cage time before I get ready for work. When I come home from work, then we have our out of cage time in the evening. In other words, my day is focused around these critters. They're that important a part of my life. Ori, come on, bud. Come on, come on. Oh, good job. Good job. What person or animal wouldn't want to be loved, wouldn't want to be cared for and given toys and affection? All right, Ori, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Everything wow. I give these spirits, they give back to me tenfold. I can have a horrible day at work and come home and the ferrets go, Mom's home, let's play. And they're out of the cage and we're having a good time. Okay, here we go. Some people say that they know what their ferrets are thinking. They can tell by what they're doing, how they're, how they're acting. Yes, I, I have to agree with that. I know my animals. I spend enough time just sitting and observing. If I come home and I'm not in a good mood, they tend to be more exuberant. They tend to come to me and try to draw me out. Um, when I'm playful, they feel that too. So I think they read us as well as we read them. Ferret people, I tend to think of them as kind of an alternative. People who don't follow mainstream, who are willing to try things different. When I first got into ferrets, I thought all ferret people hate. It's become a very consuming hobby. And, you know, we gave up the whole level of the house just to keep them comfortable. You, hey you. My family knows that when I come home from work, no matter what time of night, I need to spend at least three hours uh, so that the ferrets can have some time out of the cage. Are you wound up? Are you wound up? Go play. They just have to explore every corner and not just sniffing around like a dog. They have to check out where they hid their last toy. They have to see how high they can climb on a shelf. They have to push all the papers off your desk. Um, when they get bored, they come up and, and look at you like, come on, come on, come on, let's go play. My children have grown up with a house full of pets, but this ferret thing has kind of taken over. I try to balance family life and <laughs> my hobby. And anytime we're in public, my children always they roll their eyes and say, Mom, can we have a conversation without using the F word? I have a little ferret who likes to steal my things. She takes my shoes and my socks and all my shiny rings. She hoards up all the plastic. She likes the denture cream. And in her little ferret eye, she has an impish gleam. Ferret, oh ferret, gather of stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? Ferrets, like a lot of animals, offer unconditional love. So, if you're not feeling too good about yourself, you pick your ferret up and it adores you, it makes you feel a lot better. Come on, who wants to come out? Come on, come on, come on. You want to come out? Come on. Who wants out? They do make a lot of mess, so they can be a lot of work, but it's so much fun to take care of them. You ready? Oh. <laughs> they accept whatever they've got at the moment. 
They play with whatever they can. If they're sick, they accept it. If they die, they accept it. Ready? You can't have a bad day and have ferrets out. It, it, it doesn't matter how depressed or unhappy you are, you come home and those ferrets will cheer you up by just doing what they do. It's gonna take a long time to recover from him. Family pets are very, very dear to the people, you know. It's like having a brother or sister, you talk to them and in their own way, they talk back. And, uh, you know, when you lose one, it's really tough. The heartbreak with ferrets is, unfortunately, their lives just seem so short. We put one down in May, and I still think about them. I mean, they're, they're not far from your heart. Last year, I had lost a little girl, and that was probably the hardest thing I ever been through. It's been almost a year to the day. But everybody was very supportive of me, and that was that was a big, big help. Big help. The Rainbow Bridge is a very important part of a fair donor's life because the babies that have passed go over the bridge and wait for you. When you go over the bridge, they're going to be there. It's kind of like a little ferret heaven. And they say when they die, they go over to the Rainbow Bridge and they live happily ever after there. It's a good, a good thing to think that they don't just end. Um, I'm going to start crying. Uh, they have too much personality to think that they just end. All of our animals are buried here. We have what they, we call our, our small little pet cemetery, which is nice. grieving for, you know, another friend or human or even a kid. Most of mine are cremated, and I have them in boxes, and um, I have, like, a shelf that's a memorial to them. We have pictures and stuff that um, I have all over the house. Twenty-five pounds of dead ferret and then after their ashes come back we kind of divvy them up and go okay here's you know, two teaspoons for you and let's see you had two ferrets so you get four teaspoons <laughs> my husband thinks it's very very weird he he complains that there's at any given time more dead ferrets in my freezer than there are there's food for humans And then with single-mindedness, she feathered up her nest. She lined it with my children's socks. She really liked them best. And then she decorated it with bits of treasure found. Treasure being anything that chanced to hit the ground. Ferret, oh ferret, gather a stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? We'll put the lay on first. Oh, look at that. Oh, darling, your marvelous look. Okay, why don't you throw a scruff on him? I think ferret owners are, are different from other sorts of owners in that, that ferrets being so incredibly playful. It takes a playful person to really hook into that. Maybe somebody who is almost childlike in their sense of play. 
the shimmy. He's got the movement. He's got the motion. Voila, we have a senorita fandango. I love dressing them up. I have some that just, they just look so cute. This was a good one. You know, and I, I don't know, maybe part of it is when I was a little kid, I was a tomboy. So I didn't get into all the little dressy girly things. I do it now, maybe I'm in my second childhood, but I love making costumes. Hey, more beer here. Green beer, green beer for me and all my friends. We're gonna put on your Dracula costume. Hey. For me, it seemed like as my children got older and grew up and moved out that I sort of replaced them with ferrets. You like it? The advantage was that I could put them in a cage and they arrest you if you do that with your kids. Hi. <laughs> Ride them, cowboy. A person who has ferrets develops a special way of walking. I typically call it my ferret shuffle. Ferrets love toes. That's one of the reasons I like ferret shows. Your friends are there and they're happy for you and everybody's patting you on the back and congratulations and you have your little moment of fame. Kim, Kim got a trophy. Congratulations. Buffy got first place. Um, the baby got Buffy. Buffy took the trophy. Around lunchtime, I was pretty depressed. Uh, I didn't think we were going to go home with anything. So this was, I held my breath the whole time they were giving out the ribbons because I was on tippy toes rocking. I, I just really didn't, I didn't think she would be the one to do it, but it's it, wonderful, wonderful. She had my husband's denture cream, my long lost camera cap, 13 pair of dirty socks, a roll of... Um, when I'm playful, they feel that too. So I think they read us as well as we read them. Ferret people, I tend to think of them as kind of an alternative. People who don't follow mainstream, who are willing to try things different. <laughs> when I first got into ferrets, I thought all ferret people had, ma the men had ponytails and the women had tattoos. And uh, it seemed a little, uh, I don't know, a little young and trendy. Uh, 
but maybe that's what I need too, is that they still feel young and trendy. So I've got my little unique pets. You guys ready to come out? You have to come downstairs. Come on down here and we'll go out. Let's go. Right at this stage of my life, my ferrets are my hobby. It's become a very consuming hobby. And, you know, we gave up the whole level of the house just to keep them comfortable. You, hey, you. My family knows that when I come home from work, no matter what time of night, I need to spend at least three hours uh, so that the ferrets can have some time out of the cage. Are you wound up? Are you wound up? Go play. They just have to explore every corner and not just sniffing around like a dog. They have to check out where they hid their last toy. They have to see how high they can climb on a shelf. They have to push all the papers off your desk. Um, when they get bored, they come up and, and look at you like, come on, come on, come on, let's go play. My children have grown up with a house full of pets, but this ferret thing has kind of taken over. I try to balance family life and my hobby. And anytime we're in public, my children always, they roll their eyes and say, Mom, can we have a conversation without using the F word? I have a little ferret who likes to steal my things. She takes my shoes and my socks and all my shiny rings. She hoards up all the plastic. She likes the denture cream. And in her little ferret eye, she has an impish gleam. Ferret, oh ferret, gather of stuff. Ferret, my ferret, when will you have enough? Ferrets, like a lot of animals, offer unconditional love. So if you're not feeling too good about yourself, you pick your ferret up and it adores you, it makes you feel a lot better. She's a sweetheart, and, and in a way, she doesn't realize what she did. What she did was, that was fear. It wasn't being aggressive. So We're trying to decide if I need to get a stitch or two, but I think being on the tip of the nose, it'll be my, my uh, battle scar. Oh, she didn't bite you. She didn't. She was a very good girl. Good girl. Very good girl. Watch out. Yes, you good girl. I need all of the altar hobs back to the judging table for ribboning. We want these numbers to come back to the judging area for ribboning. 200. When they have callbacks, that means you get a ribbon. One through 10, you don't know yet. And that is very exciting. For ribboning, 600, 601, 603, 605, 606, 607, 610, 611, 613, 615, 617, 6, As they start reading off the ribbons is where you really get the adrenaline going because they start at 10th place. 10th place, 317. 9th place, 429. And the longer it goes, it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Seventh place, 403. Sixth place, 311. Yes, yes. <laughs> the ferrets don't care. The ferrets could care less. And I try to look at it like the ferret would. And then if I do get called up, then I look at it as a human would. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy it. 409 and 308 up, please. Oh my gosh! Okay. 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 And in okay. second place, we have 409. 
mainly for me, it's like, yeah, this is mine, you know. I bred this boy, and, you know, he's winning first place, and this is great, you know. See, I can breed these ferrets. I guess to show other people, too, that, you know, my breeding is just as, just as good as yours. You know, I, I can be, breed good ferrets, too.